So you decided to click on my video that said Halo 4 review. Well done. That is your first step into a larger world. Or not. So Halo 4, Xbox 360 original, created by 343 Industries, first proper mainline Halo game that was not made by Bungie. Oof. This got a lot of ire. It was like, oh, Halo 4? You didn't really think we wanted Master Chief left floating in space for the rest of eternity, did you? I fucking didn't. That's not an ending. That's when you can't think of an ending or you deliberately leave a cliffhanger so that you can continue it at a later date. I think it was like a year later. But, you, you know, you've left it in the sort of hanging balance basket thingy and it's, like it's still there in sight. And I'm talking shit. And I think it's safe to say that there'll be spoilers in this video, okay? Hefty, game ruining, story explaining, well maybe not explaining, but revealing, that's the one, story revealing content. Not that there really is much of a story, but hey ho. I do often prefer a simple tale when it comes to video games, unless it's narrative based, in which case that better be on point, because really that's all you have. But Halo is a first person shooter, the story is uh, of some importance, mm, little importance, it's like Doom, I don't need a big fucking story, just point me in the direction of the demons, or in this case the aliens, and I will slaughter them in a million. Everybody's heftily excited about playing this Halo Infinite fucking multiplayer nonsense, I'm not caring about multiplayer, you will find in all my videos that multiplayer really won't be part of it, unless there's like a horde mode that you can play on your own, so they're as multiplayer modes in these games, I just don't play them because fuck that. There is Spartan Ops in this, which is a pretty good single or multiplayer mode, which is basically just horde mode. You go through as a Spartan, going through unfortunately the same levels that you went through in the single player campaign, only cut into smaller chunks. You can play this multiplayer with a friend, and I've done so, and it's actually a lot of fun. So if you like that shit, play Spartan Ops. It's PVE as they call it now. Player versus environment. It's actually, yeah, player versus AI. Is that really environment? Hmm, strange. Whenever I think of environment, I just see big rocks coming to life and bins throwing themselves at you. Never mind. Talking shite again. So I'll catch you up a wee bit. The story is, is that Master Chief at the end of Halo 3 was in the other half of that spaceship and has been floating for about 40 years. Then he gets awoken because they fly directly into the orbit of a forerunner planet called Requiem and it's a really weird planet, it's like a big it's like a big Death Star or a Star Killer base type thing it's like this fucking metal planet thing with but there's still rocks and for it, it's weird, it's just a weird thing they just, they love their weird things, the old forerunners they love to mix nature and technology and have it all looking very strange, you know which of course it does you, so you, you wake up and Cortana's like, I'm under attack! You're like, what? I okay, hold on. Can I not get a cup of coffee first, you bastard? Where's my breakfast? Cow. Uh, sorry, that was awful sexist of me, wasn't it? Master Chief can get his own fucking coffee. You ever remember that Matt Hazard game that came out that was a, pay, a, a, pay, a pace take? A piss take of video games and they had the Master Chef. Oh, that's hilarious, isn't it? Pity he didn't have one here now, so before he fights the newly realigned Covenant forces, is like, well, okay. Master Chief even mentions this, it's like, weren't we at peace with these bastards? It must be an offshoot, I okay, whatever. What happened? I mean, yeah. Basically, we, we want the game to be like Halo, you know, have familiar Halo enemies. And a lot of the things from, like, sort of, the difficulty of the elites have made it in from Reach, which I quite like. They have once again redesigned the assault rifle. Uh, and it's back to its original look, but it now sounds different. Now, I, w I wouldn't mind this if they would say, like, well, this is a assault rifle mark, whatever, but I don't know how he would upgrade his gun out in the middle of deep space while he's asleep. Maybe Cortana could have done that in the machine shop. I don't know, but it all sounds different. And it's just... I don't know why they're doing this. It's needlessly fucking weird, okay? So the, the, the plasma gun in this one for the Covenant forces is like the one from Reach, it's like a, a big rifle. It's quite cool, I quite like it actually. It's chunky and it makes funky nasal pew pew noises and I'm, I'm all about that shit. Plasma pistols is the same, cool, like it, don't underestimate it. The Magnum, I think you can you can zoom and fire with this one again, cool. Something from Reach. Kinda feels like a Reach overhaul this, this game. 
a lot of the animations are similar from when you kill the elites, they sort of ooh, stagger and fall over. It's kind of funny actually. Looks like, looks like they've been killed and they slip on some soap and then, or ice, whatever, or you know, oil, whatever, whatever you want them to slip on. Jizz, if you like. And I don't know what it is about the grunts, but they're fat wee bastards now. If you notice, they'll be haha, wee junky fuckers that they've been on the fucking roids. What kind of? Well, they're they are, they're like they're, they're like fish. So what would what would they what, what would fit, would fish eat their own? I don't know. But chicken, perhaps. So they're like these wee fat tubby <laughs> things. That the jackals are back. There's different variations of the jackals, but the new enemy type is the uh, Prometheans. The Prometheans are like a machine race devised by this twat on Requiem. It turns out the the planet's a prison for the Didact. The Forerunner died out, and you get to see what a Forerunner looks like without any masks or helmets. They're ugly bastards. Now, and here's where the game kind of falls apart with the story a wee bit. Who are you? I am what remains of the Forerunner, once known as the Librarian. My memories were retained to assist humanity on their path to the Mantle. Though sadly, that plan is now at risk. The Didact is leaving Requiem. Soon. You must not allow it. Leaving? He seeks this. The Composer. A device which will allow him to finally contain the greatest enemy ever faced by the Forerunners. You. Mankind spread into the stars with an unexpected, desperate violence. Entire systems fell before the Didax warrior servants rose to halt the aggression. When the Didact finally exhausted the humans after a millennia, his sentence was severe. We had no way of knowing that the Forerunners were not your only enemy. Humanity hadn't been expanding. They were running. Weakened from our conflict, we were no match for the parasite which pursued you. I always thought that the Forerunners were completely gone. Totally gone. They're not. There's a one left or however many left and the, the, um, the humans were the offshoot of the genetic offspring if you will of the genetic mutation of a forerunner sent to earth because I'm sure they send people to earth at some point so I'm, I'm really confused at what the story is now and it turns out the didact has been putting humans inside these giant Promethean uh, knights and they're alright to fight against, they're not as annoying as a flood, there is no flood in this night, fuck. You've got wee crawlers things, that are like wee dugs. You've got the Promethean Knights, who can spawn wee drone flying thingies that will repair them. So, kill them first. And then, there's little turrets. There's not an awful lot of variation within the Forerunner enemies. It just feels weird to be fighting the Forerunners, but the Didact are prick. And he was imprisoned, and you let him out because, well, wouldn't it be a story otherwise? Would the I like the didact ship? The elites bow at the didact, and so you're just not gonna fuck out everybody. There's this gun called the saw. Noise. And it's fucking brilliant. It's like a, it's like a Rambo gun. It looks very sort of modern actually, which is the bizarre thing about the, the 343 games, there's, there's some guns that just look a little bit too modern, Saw is one of them, it just looks like a big uh, like white M60 with a drum barrel, which is, it's cool, it's a great gun for crowd control, you just we're all dead, and then you run out of bullets, 
really quickly. So, yeah. Redesigned the Banshee, but I think that actually made it into all the other Halo games through the Remaster Collection or the Master Chief Collection. So nothing really to write home about there. The graphics are beautiful though. The graphics in this game are meh, sensational. I don't have a favourite level, and here is the problem with the, with that is a lot of the levels kind of look the same. There is a desert level in which I had a huge, huge fucking glitch. It was a massive glitch, a monster glitch, a restart the level kind of from the beginning glitch. You know, not no, not good, not good at all. And this was in the port, this wasn't in the original version of the game. Well, I never encountered it in the 360 version, but I did encounter it in the Xbox One version. Well done, 343. Give yourselves a round of applause. These are my arse cheeks clapping for you, by the way. You know my horns, right? <laughs> Farts. Anyway. There are no Promethean vehicles, though, which is kind of strange. They don't have any vehicles, but they teleport all over the place, so I think that's probably why they don't need vehicles. You get various types of the enemy types within the Promethean hierarchy and lower archy. So you've got the, the, the Dugs, the Crawlers, but you get sort of different versions of that. You get like King Dugs, and look like you get wee crowns and that, and you'll get the same for the Knights. You'll have ones that will just fucking rush you and battle you in the face. What a pain in the arse. The best part is when the Covenant forces are there and the, the Knights are there, the Prometheans are there. And they saw a big, massive, huge gun battle and it's a lot of fun. This is actually a really good Halo game. I don't know why people really don't like it. Other than the story bits that I talked about before, uh, the, the the game is good. It feels good. It looks good. It looks great, actually. This remaster is night and day above the original. And even on the 360, I thought this looked like an absolutely smashing title. But people are shite. It's like it's not shite. Come on, it isn't shite. It's just a wee bit different. There's no flood. Hooray! Fucking hate the flood. They're a pain in the ass to fight against. They're not fun. The opposite of fun because they're just mindless fucking drones that run at you like fucking dribblers, and they take sometimes way too much bullets to put down. Okay. Another smashing thing about this game is there's a couple of tank levels and I love riding about in a scorpion and blowing things to fucking bits. Boom. 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 Yes. Come on. Turns out there's more Spartans as well, which would make sense because I'd think you'd be wanting to make some Spartans. There's a woman Spartan. Don't know her name. Doesn't matter. But she's there and she's tiny compared to the chief. Then you see her against another normal human and you're like, Fuck it, how big is the Master Chief? He must be like 11 feet tall. Big bastard. Mate, there's even a Star Fox inspired flying level, which is actually pretty tough. I died quite a few times, I think the hit detection's off a wee bit though. Because I'm pretty sure I made it through those gaps and I just decided to explode no matter what. I hate it when that happens in games, you're just sitting there questioning your cell, and then you sit there questioning the game, and I'm like, am I blaming the game because I'm shite? Or is the collision detection actually off a wee bit in this section? Took me a few tries to get the end bit and I'm like, I'm, I swear to Christ, I was nowhere near the end and I just blew up. Nothing was shooting at me and I just, boom, fuck you, you're like, come on. And then after that level, there's like another level that looks very similar to what came before, only it's red. And then you, you go up against the didact and the didact's like fucking... Well, while all this is going on, Cortana's slowly losing her mind, right? She's just going, ah! going rampant, going fucking mental. I will not allow you to leave this planet! Cortana. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that. Commander Lasky. Pursuant to Article 55 of UNSC Regulation 12, 14572, I'm ordering you to remove that AI's data chip and retire it for final dispensation. I don't want to. You don't want me to. Remove Please. the chip now, Commander. Please. I don't want to. Give me that chip. I quite like watching people lose their minds. It's... That's a bit dark, Craigs, what the fuck? Anyway... So, she distracts the, the didact like a cloud of, you know, ghost computer vapor farts. 
and then you stand up and you get a wee bomb thing and you stick it to his chest and it, it, it explodes and then he falls off a wee light bridge into a big vortex and that's your boss fight. There really is no boss fights and I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all because half the time they make these boss fights and they're just pish. They'll do, it's a tired concept. They're, Ooh, end of level guardian, you're like, fuck off, I just want to play the next bit of the game. Not fun, because, well, they could be fun, but they just don't make them fun. Sometimes it's just like fighting a normal enemy that takes a little bit more to damage, to die. Okay? So, boom. And then apparently the die deck doesn't even die here. He dies, off screen, in a comic. Fuck's sake. No, see the when he falls down that vortex? To me, I'm not reading any of your shite comics, right? For a kickoff, fuck all that crap. He's dead, and you can interpret it that way, which is good because I'm not reading your fucking comic. I'm not buying your fucking comic. I'm not looking at your fucking comic or your book. Up your ass, put it in the fucking game. Stop with this media fucking frenzy where you need to fucking watch the movie, play the video game, read the comic, read the book, fucking watch the TV series, watch the webisodes, watch all the wee fucking diddly bits that you find through the campaign to get the whole fucking story and fuck off with that shit it's tired I hate it and you're fucking lazy bastards for it because you get other people to write your story for you fucking stop it anyway that's my gripe and you'll have this in Halo 5 as well oh Jesus Christ then the game ends and then you end up back. I don't know where you end up actually. I can't even remember the ending. Didac falls. Uh, Cortana gets destroyed. Somehow. That's uh, something to do with a ramp insane when she split herself off into multiple versions of her own self. She just like sort of farts and fades away. It's very sad. It's very, very sad. It's not really. No, it's actually not bad. For, you know, emotional punch. I've seen worse. Nothing will get me as much as Doom Guy when he punches fuck it all of Samuel Hayden's instruments, that's hilarious. Love that shit, it's like, oh you're going to, go to do this gently? No. SMASH! Come on John, you need to be doing that a bit more. Anyway, if you've watched this video, God love you, you're a star, a saint, a scholar, all that shit. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 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 You persist too long after your own defeat. Come then, warrior. Have your resolution. Favor. Your compassion for mankind is misplaced. I'm not doing this for mankind. 